From a fully formed footprint that is 290 million years old to this 250 million year old microchip, this video is pretty wild. The evidence is seriously starting to pile up to prove once and for all that our origins as a species are not what we think it is. And history is far more interesting than we believe in the mainstream. It really makes you wonder, did an advanced humanoid species once inhabit this planet hundreds of millions of years ago? Or did we, or do we, develop time travel somewhere along our journey? These new archeological excavation findings are a game changer for the way that we think about ourselves and our place in this world. They're so shocking that they entirely disrupt the neatly established narrative and point to a far more complex story of humanity's beginnings. I guess that's why a lot of people tend to look the other way, but no longer. Adding to the complexity of these out of place artifacts, it's not just on earth that these anomalies appear. Photographs taken from the moon reveal yet even more out of place artifacts, even despite NASA very obviously blurring the photos before revealing them to the public. Which, why is there not a social uprising towards NASA about this? They actually released so many documents with very clearly blurred sections all over the place. And most people are like, huh, okay, well, um, what's on Netflix? These lunar discoveries suggest that we have only scratched the surface of understanding our place in the cosmos. But hey, I guess complacency is infectious. Can someone pass the popcorn? As more of these findings come to light, the line between science fiction and science fact becomes increasingly blurred. What was once relegated to imaginative stories now demands serious consideration, pushing us to question the foundations of our understanding of civilization, human origins, and our role in the universe. Oh man, can we please get Neil deGrasse Tyson to watch this video? You think he'd talk about this on his podcast? I mean, I know I'm a cartoon character, but that doesn't mean I shouldn't be taken seriously. Or does it? So in this very special video, I've connected with my friends at Gaia one more time to share this mind blowing clip with you. Take it in and see for yourself. It's absolutely crazy. And once you're done, if you want more, the entire binge worthy series is available on Gaia, which you can watch using the links in the description with a free seven day trial. My name's Greg Braden. I'd like to welcome you to this very special presentation of Missing Links, the deep truth of our origin, history, destiny, and fate. In this episode, I'm inviting you on a journey. And it's a journey that goes beyond what's accepted by conventional science today, the evidence that turns history upside down. And in some respects, it's gonna sound like science fiction. The thing is, while these discoveries may sound like fiction, they're not, they're real. And because they are real, we have to make room for them in the story of our past. New dating techniques are now revealing brand new clues about the mystery of our past. And they're also revealing a new and entirely new class of artifacts that we've never seen before. They're called OOP Arts, which stands for Out of Place Artifacts. So I wanna to talk to you about out of place artifacts. What are they? What do they mean? And what do they say to us about our past? When we look into the earth, the deeper we go into the earth's crust, the older the rock layers become. It makes perfect sense. So the newer layers are on top, the older layers are at the bottom. And the reason that this is important is because scientists use this principle to help determine the age of artifacts. When they find an artifact deep in the earth, in a layer of coal, for example, the thinking is that the artifact had to be in place when that coal was being developed. In the case of coal, that means hundreds of thousands of years ago. So this is important. It was in the 17, the 1800s when technology brought us to the point where we could actually drill into the earth. And it was through the drill bits that were coming up in the coal seams uh, of the Carolinas and Virginia here in America and in Russia and other parts of the world. All of a sudden, in these coal seams, the researchers began finding and the engineers began finding artifacts that simply should not be existing in those coal seams. They're called out of place artifacts because they don't fit the traditional timeline for what should have been happening in that layer of earth at the time. So I'm just gonna share with you a sampling of these because we could do an entire program based only on our out of place artifacts. The first one I wanna talk about, uh, it, to me, is, is one of the most profound. It's called the Antikythera machine. It was actually discovered 
by divers off the shore of Crete in 1901. 1901, the divers were looking for other kinds of artifacts and they found this encrusted conglomerate of something they had never seen before. Now, bear in mind, this is 1901. This is the turn of two centuries ago. Not last century, but the century before. And when they brought this artifact to the surface, what they saw encrusted in the shells uh, and in the, the sediment that was there were a series of gears, very sophisticated gears, in a way that had never been seen before. Well, they took this artifact, they preserved it, they couldn't explain it. And it wasn't until x-rays became a little bit more sophisticated that the x-rays were able to actually penetrate the sediment and revealed inside something even more profound, really sophisticated variable gears that interlock with one another in a way that had never been seen in the world before. The interesting thing is that the artifact was dated to about 80 BCE, before Common Era, which means it's over 2,000 years old. So the question is, over 2,000 years ago, number one, who had the technology to make this kind of gear? Number two, who had the technology to take these gears and apply them in a machine that is now being suspected as an astronomical device to help calculate the movements of stars and planets in the heaven in a way that we didn't see until the 20th century, later in the 20th century. So this is an example of an out of place artifact. But there are others. Now I'm, I'm going to go from some of the most recent backward in geologic time, just to give you a sense of what scientists are dealing with. Because remember, science is telling us through that pyramid of thinking that we saw in an earlier episode, that civilization's only 5,000 years old. That's the problem when we start finding things like this. What you're looking at on your screen right now is a clay human figure that was found in Nampa, Idaho. It was discovered by drilling a well, it was a water well, 300 feet deep, and that 300 feet placed the drill into the geologic strata that we call the Pleistocene. So this is the Pleistocene age. That is about 1.5 two million years before present. So just for reference, I mean, humans only appeared on Earth about 200,000 years ago is what we're finding. So the question is, what is this clay figurine, a little bit uh, larger than the size of an American dime you're seeing for, for scale on the screen, what is that figurine doing in Pleistocene strata that's now being dated at 1.2 million years? Scientists can't answer that. That is why it is an out of place artifact. Now we're gonna go back a little further and this is a particularly fascinating artifact for me. This is found in Northern Russia in Lubensk. And if you look closely, what you're seeing in this piece of rock is what looks to be a microchip. It's a microchip that should not be where it is because this rock comes from an even older period in geologic history. It comes from the Permian period, that's around 225 to 250 million years before present. This cannot be hoaxed because this chip is actually embedded in the strata and the strata was made 225 to 250 million years ago. How does this happen? What is it telling us about our past? This is one of the great mysteries that researchers are struggling with right now. But it goes even further. I live in northern New Mexico, and it was in New Mexico in 1987 that a researcher found what you're seeing on the screen right now, and it is just what it looks like. It is a human footprint. And it's not just a piece of a human footprint. This is a fully formed, very well-developed human footprint. The problem is, this footprint is in Permian strata, a time from the Permian period that's about 290 million years before present. Again, just for reference, humans first appeared only 200,000 years ago. So what is a fully formed human footprint doing in strata that's 290 million years old? So the question is, how far back do these out of place artifacts go? Here's an even bigger question. Are they confined only to this planet? 
Are they confined only to Earth? Or is it possible we can find out-of-place artifacts in other places, maybe like the Moon? Well, something very interesting has happened. In the year 2016, so very, very recently, NASA has just released its entire archive of lunar images, images taken of the lunar surface from the Apollo missions all the way from 1961 when they began through 1972. There are things on these images that NASA cannot explain. So they are called anomalous images. Some of them are so anomalous that they have been pixelated out so that we can't really see what they are, but we can still see the pixels. So there's something happening on the moon and I want you to see some of these images, just, just a couple of them. I was an amateur archeologist when I was in college. And one of the things, the very first things that I learned as an archeologist is this. When we see 90 degree angles on an archeological site, that tells us that it is in fact an archeological site, that it is not a natural formation. Nature does not erode with wind in 90 degree angles, or nature does not erode through a, a stream or a river in 90 degree angles. So when you see a 90 degree angle like you're seeing on your screen right now, this is an excavated archaeological site that we're seeing an aerial view and it's very clear to see the red lines are showing us where that 90 degree angle is. The next image that you're seeing, this is from the surface of the moon and this is among the images that NASA released. You're seeing on the lower right hand par portion of the screen, you can see what looks like a little cube and then in the upper right hand portion, you're seeing what definitely is an enlargement of that cube. Those are definitely 90 degree angles. They are definitely made intentionally. They are not the result of erosion. The question is, what are they doing on the moon? We have been led to believe that the moon is a sterile surface, that there is no life existing on the moon, nor has there ever been. So when we begin to see things like this, and again, these images from 1961 through 1972, what do they mean? Well, if it was only one image, you'd say maybe it's just a, a trick of light and a trick of light in shadow, but it's not just one image. I want you to see some of the other images that NASA is releasing. The Clementine mission to the moon came later after the Apollo missions. So Clementine was a separate mission that went back to the moon, maybe to look a little closer at some of the anomalies that Apollo was seeing. And it's the Clementine images that we're finding pixelated, although they are released to the public. So you're seeing one now. There's obviously something here in the image that you're seeing uh, that for whatever reason, we're not being allowed to see. What could that be on the surface of the moon? What is the out of place artifact that we're not seeing? Here's another one uh, that looks more like some kind of a, a tower, perhaps of some kind or an obelisk that's been pixeled out. These are from the Clementine mission. During the Cold War, even though the former Soviet Union and former United States of America were at war on one level. It was a very civilized war in some respects because there were agreements among scientists on other levels. One of those agreements was that things that were found on the moon for whatever reason were not publicly shared among the people of the earth at the time. And I'm not gonna say it's right, wrong, good or bad. There were research programs that said that certain kinds of information could disrupt the fabric of society and overturn religious beliefs. And again, it was another world. This was the 60s and the 70s. But the point is, those agreements were honored, and I think that's one of the reasons we're not seeing some of these images. The nations that are now on their way to the moon, the nations that have the money and the technology and the will to return, were not part of those agreements. China, for example, India, are both on their way to the moon. And both nations have said that when they land on the moon, they will televise to the people of the earth whatever it is that they find live as they find it. When we find those out of place artifacts on the moon, when we find archeological remnants of intentional civilization in a place where we used to be hoping to find microbes, we, we were looking for life, hoping to find microscopic life, and now we're finding entire temple complexes is what appears to be on those images. When we find those, my sense is that we're going to discover something that could be 
the most powerful, the most unifying experience the people, our global family, the people of Earth could ever have. Because my sense is that when we go into those ancient sites, we're going to find the hieroglyphs on the walls. We're going to find writing in languages that we already know. In the original language, they're called root languages of the Earth, Hebrew, Sanskrit, cuneiform, Arabic. And the reason we're finding them there is because those sites are not necessarily alien ET UFO sites. I believe they are sites that were developed by us from another cycle of another civilization. When we worked together as a family on this planet, when we cooperated and achieved great and beautiful things. And my question is, if we were able to do things like that in the past, how much further could we go if we did the same thing right now with what we know today. Here's the beauty. Here we are on the verge of war at a time when the cycles are converging, creating the tension in the time of extremes. And at exactly that time, we may find the evidence of us from another time that has the power to unify us rather than divide us. And I think we're going to see that very soon in our lifetimes. So what would that mean? What would it mean if we found something like that? And when we look at the advanced civilizations on Earth, why did those civilizations collapse? What happened in the past? Is there something that could have happened then that we've forgotten? Or maybe we chose to forget because whatever it was was so painful, we didn't want to carry it in the future civilizations. It brings all of this to a focus and says, have we been here before? Have we done this in the past? Are we unconsciously living a cycle where technology advances in one particular way at one particular time to the point where we are given the ability to preserve or destroy all that we love, all that we cherish, all that we hold dear? And are we at that point right now? That's the question that we need to ask. In our next episode, we're going to take this exploration beyond the temples and the walls of advanced civilizations from the past. We're going to discover the single truth that has been so fundamental to every ancient technological and indigenous civilization in the past. It's a deep truth that a new discovery is forcing modern science now to embrace. Thank you for joining me for this program today and be sure to tune in for our next all new episode, Missing Links the deep truth of our origin, history, destiny, and fate. So that was pretty crazy, right? Unless you'd already heard it before. Are you not speechless like I was? This video though is only the beginning and I only had permission to share half of the episode. In the same full length video, Greg also looks at the writings from the Mahabharata in India, describing this ancient super weapon from 7,000 years ago and then links it to the actual location where that event most likely took place, where we find 7,000 year old radioactive bodies and a giant super crater, which has zero evidence within it of a meteor impact. I definitely encourage you to go and get a free trial on Gaia using the link below and check out the whole show. It's really amazing. As always, thanks for watching and sharing this video with your friends and family. See you next time.